Hey, what's up, y'all? This is the Aaron Gorman Podcast. I'm here with my special guest today, Mason Archie. How's it going? It's going pretty well. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Mason is uh, uh, the founder and the creator of Fate Masters and The Angle. He also played professional basketball. And, uh, you know, we're going to get this going. Talk about your upbringing growing up in Indianapolis. Okay, yeah. So I was born in 1994. Um, I'm a native of Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I grew up with Speedway. Uh, my mother ran a daycare, 24 7 daycare, called Unique 7 Academy. Now she has Unique 7 X. Uh, she ran that for about 12 years. Uh, I graduated. I attended Eagledale Christian Academy for kindergarten through fifth grade. Then uh, after that, I was able to skip the sixth grade and go to the seventh grade at Charles A. Timley Accelerated School, uh, which is now a prominent school in charter school today. Uh, we had to wear uniform, we had college prep. So it was a great experience for me. Uh, so that's kind of a little bit about my background about Indianapolis and uh, where I'm from and you know education. Yeah, for sure. So how did you get started with basketball? When was the point where you got serious with it? Yeah, so I would say about middle school when I was kind of working on my game, going to different rec centers, Watkins Park, um, Washington Park, uh, just at my high school. And I, when I, about seventh grade, eighth grade, when I started getting competitive and learning how to actually play by the playbook and different things like that, that's when I decided that, you know, this is something that I really want to pursue uh, at a collegiate level and then on, on to a professional level. So talk about that experience from playing, um, you know, a high level uh, Division One basketball and then playing professionally. Yeah, so honestly, it's it's pretty tough, man. Like, you know, you play Division One basketball, you have one more year coming up at Valparaiso. Your brother's an NBA player, star in the league, uh, an Indiana legend. So you're real familiar with the work ethic, the day to day, the getting up early. So that's that's kind of when I got better, when I started really doing the things that the pros do, really doing the things that I saw, that I watched. And uh, that's why I say my game improved. So talk about the idea of Fate Masters. You talk about, you know, your upbringing, how much that, you know, had to do with your success. You know, talk about, you know, why you started it and what, you know, what's the idea of it? Yes. So Fate Masters is my nonprofit. Uh, this was a dream of mine since middle school. I would always tell my friends about it. I actually did a senior capstone in high school uh, for um, what I wanted to do. I wanted to start a financial literacy course. So now, what is it? Almost 10 years later, I've able to, been able to do that. Uh, my nonprofit is very successful. We have programs, we're expanding into Gary, uh, we're expanding into, into different cities as well. Uh, our marquee program is at Ignite Achievement Academy. Uh, Ignite is located in a food desert, one of the biggest in Indianapolis, uh, the 46208 zip code. And at Ignite, uh, we're trying to invoke change, teach education, different things like that. Uh, I know that you're big on that, your family's big on that, you're a great student. So, you know, this is my passion. And right now, we're looking for donations, funding, and we have some big programs coming up. So talk about the change that you've seen in your kids just over the course of a couple years. Uh, so the main thing we try to focus on is leadership and responsibility, and also just academic excellence. Uh, that's something I learned from the Center for Leadership Development. You know, I'm a graduate, I won scholarships from there. Me and my entire family, brother and sister, intended all the programs. So uh, with, with Fate Masters, I try to invoke that same thing. You know, and the kids, give them inspiration, give them a chance to learn financial literacy, give them a chance to see cool guys like you who are strong academically and strong athletically. Mm -hmm. You know, that's important for our community to see African-American men doing that. So uh, my focus is to keep expanding and what I've seen is expansion of the kids. So talk, so just talking about community for, you know, the kids and community and where you're trying to achieve in the community through the kids. Yeah. So through the kids, I'm trying to just achieve leaders. You know, build leaders, build them up, give them confidence, give them a, a hope. You know, where they're from, all they see are the same things, repetitive things, drugs, alcohol, shooting. They don't see positive role models. They don't see guys that look like you and I that come in suits or sometimes come fly. Mm -hmm. And that's the things that they're attracted to. So if we bring that attraction to them, and it'll only open up their minds and open up their eyes and give them expansion. So talking about the community, um, you know, talk about the black community specifically. What are your opinions on it? What are some of the things that you feel are going on? Yeah, well, more immediately, these are the things that are going on, riots, um, inequality, uh, injustices. These are things that have been happening to the black community for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 2018, when I was a part of the Bill Benjamin for Sheriff campaign, these are things that we were invoking in the community. Mm -hmm. We want change. Change and Unite was our slogan. So I was on the marketing for that. I will also be on the marketing in about three years when we run again. Uh, fortunately, we lost, but that's why we get to go again. You know, it's all about the experience. Um, our goal in all of this, the goal is to rise for Indianapolis. The goal for black people as a whole is to come together. You know, black on black. 
and also not be violent, but instead be educational. So what, what do you think the, the goal of it is? What do you think needs to change in our society? Now, I wouldn't say it's necessarily anything that we can change because it's all systematic. All we can do is be the best that we can do day by day. Mm-hmm. That's all. So what do you think um, you know, could change within the black community in general? Uh, I would say education. This is why I brought, brought up Fate Master. This is what made, gave me the idea to create a nonprofit that's profitable, that gives back to the community, and that creates programs. We have SAT prep coming up in July. Any kids that are trying to get to college, we can start SAT prep as young as fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, it doesn't matter. We just need that every year. It's not gonna be expensive, it's affordable, and we'll have certified SAT prep um, teachers as well, instructors, so, so that's important. So how, how important do you think black culture is in Indianapolis? So uh, I would say black culture is very important. You know, um, Indiana is a Republican state. There are many of us. You have Gary, Indiana, you have Indianapolis. You know, you have speckles of black people all throughout the state, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's important for us to all stick together. And as a black community, it's important for us to um, be educational, like I said again. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, the black community in Indianapolis is strong. We are uh, persistent. And these are things that we have to use to our advantage. As far as just, being aware of our surroundings, uh, working together, and making our dollar flip, as you hear all the time. We don't make our dollar flip enough. So talk about the end goal. You know, we're on the conversation of culture. Talk about, you know, what it is, uh, what you're trying to achieve, and what are some of the things that you do. Yeah, so uh, the end goal uh, is something that I really created as a mid- in middle school. Uh, it's a brand that I've always had. It's really a mindset more than anything. It's something that my dad taught me. Um, I had an interview with Top View, and I kind of explained this before. Um, what we do is we partner with brands. We do marketing, we do events, uh, we do brand building, and we do instructional leadership organization. Mm-hmm. A lot of black people don't have good businesses, good ideas, but they don't know how to expand. They don't know how to get a word out. They don't know how to come together community-wise. So these are things that the end goal brings, not only to the city of Indianapolis, but outside of Indianapolis. We have clients all over the country. So talk about some of the upcoming promotional events that you have going on. Yes, yeah, so we have a new club idea that we have. Uh, we start off on Juneteenth weekend. It'll be announced uh, latest by Wednesday, Juneteenth. So be sure to follow the end goal on Instagram. Um, our goal on that is to bring a dope party experience, but it's more so networking. It's more so fly. We have pictures, video. We'll have security, and we'll have celebrities coming often. So we're looking. We're looking to do this often, uh, every week, uh, something like that. And if not, it'll be announced at the end goal. So be sure to follow. So being an entrepreneur, um, starting this stuff up, you know, talk, talk, pretty much just talk to me about how things have been, some of the things that you've learned, and some of the things that you could tell someone who's younger than you. So being an entrepreneur, uh, the biggest thing is that you have to know every aspect of your business. You can't just be one person and fall off. Mm -hmm. You have to know every aspect of your business so that you know what's going on. You also have to know everybody's background, education, and always inspire them. And when you have setbacks, you have to know that you're the one who will bring it all back together. So what do you think the most important aspect is of entrepreneurship? The most important aspect is consistency and persistence. Mm-hmm. Consistency, persistence. Um, in high school, they called me the example because that's what I always um, personify, those two things. And so I would say those are the two biggest things when it comes to being an entrepreneur, being successful, and being at your best at all times. So what are some of the goals that you set out just in terms of just being an entrepreneur just over the course of time? Uh, some goals that I've set out is just to be the best I can be, uh, give back to the community, which is what I do with Fate Masters, uh, inspire women because they don't have enough support, so I have programs for them as well, uh, help them start businesses as well also, and also give back to family and community. Um, make sure to always collab with the younger generation so that we can always push forward, push forward. That's the key. What are some of the things that you do in terms of just being creative and, and starting new ventures and, and, you know, pretty much just connecting with others? Yeah, I would say anytime, man, it's always reading a lot. I read all sorts of things, fictions, um, novels, uh, novel fictions, uh, comedies, uh, old plays. Uh, in high school and college, I was always fascinated with philosophy, which is why I made philosophy my major and also did a master's program in philosophy as well. Um, I did a master of arts in philosophy. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish because I did sign a play professionally in Mexico, but I was able to finish at least three-fourths of the course. So reading and knowledge are things that drive me. 
So, you know, talk about your interest in black fine art, you know, what got you into it and pretty much, you know, where, where they led you. Yeah, well, my dad, he's a national collective fine artist. His name is Mason Archie. You can go to masonarchie.com and look up all of his work. Um, he has all sorts of collectors, people who love his work. He's a master of what he does. Uh, and he has collectors all over the country. So this is his passion. I like to support him. And that's how I got my passion for fine art as well. Um, if you like to see any of his work, um, he doesn't have shows often. We may be having a, a show in New York that I'm really not supposed to speak about in New York this fall. But um, if it happens, it happens. And then I'll make sure you have an announcement. And you can go to my Instagram and follow that as well. Um, uh, my father just had actually a really big art show, uh, world, you know, really well-known art show. Mm -hmm. It was the, uh, at the 924 Gallery, you know, with Jay Parnell and Logan. So they were able to do a, a, a black renaissance sort of thing, you know, mm -hmm. but really just for the community, for uh, the black community, for the white community, for the Latino community, and for everybody to see the beauty in black fine art. So talking about that, what is your favorite work that your dad has done? I would say my favorite work would be, well, I would say instead of work, I'll talk about series. A mm -hmm. series of paintings are multiple paintings that he does that my dad creates on one subject matter. So I would say The Long Journey Home. It's called Long Journey Home. And that's a series of paintings. He probably has six to 10 of those, maybe even seven to 12 of those. And uh, those paintings are different sizes and different shapes. But they're all talking about the end goal, the long journey home towards the end goal, towards prosperity, towards freedom, towards education, building your mind. The end goal, anything that you're focused on, that's the long journey home. And so that's why I'm able to connect with those, that series of paintings the most. So just talk about the advice that you would give to another college athlete. Yeah, so any college athlete, I would say focus up because uh, right now they're focused, they're, the next move is paying student athletes. So if they're paying student athletes, then that means you have to think ahead. And so that's what the end goal sports actually does. We're working with athletes on building their brand, helping them with training, and building the future up. So in case they can't play sports, they have other options, which is what I prepare for. Mm -hmm. So where do you think you're at today and where do you want to be in terms of just everything that's going on just in your life in general? Um, as far as everything that is going on, man, I'm pretty satisfied, but I'm not. You know, mm -hmm. I want to keep working hard, keep building my programs, and keep being respectful to others, and you know, just working on being humble. Uh, my biggest thing is giving back. And so that's what my family is about, and that's what I'm about. You know, you talked a lot about your family in this uh, podcast. So, you know, just talk about, you know, how big they've been and some of the uh, encouragement and some of the things that they've done just, to, you know, just throughout time. Yeah, so me and my family are really close. I have a brother, Dante Archie, a sister, Nicole Archie. Uh, my sister's at Howard University. She'll be graduating in a semester or less. Uh, my brother, he's into marketing. He's a marketing guru. So they both help me at the same time. My mom, uh, she's into education. So she's the one who helped me with education. As I stated before, my dad is the master oil painter. So... Um, he's an actually collector artist, uh, one of the greatest fine artists uh, that I've seen, and a lot of people say the same. Um, so, because we're all very diverse and have different talents, we're able to all help each other. So, you know, pretty much why have you decided to stay in Indianapolis? Because obviously you've had a ton of opportunity to go elsewhere, you know, you play professionally, you, you know, you, you have a lot of stuff going together, you know, why, why stay here in Indianapolis? Well, you just said it, man. Like, I've, I've actually been other places. I've been in Mexico, Canada, New York, mm -hmm. uh, North Carolina for multiple years. Um, I've been in all, pretty much all 50 states. Yeah. I've been out the country. So now it's time for me to build at home for a little bit before I expand. L.A., Atlanta, different places. So I have a little bit more work to do here on top of getting ready for law school within the next six months. So that's what I've been working on the heaviest, and uh, that's what everybody can expect from me soon. For sure. Well, thank you. We'll take some questions from the guests. All right, welcome back to the Angoran Podcast. On this segment, we're going to have some of our guests ask us some questions. All right, so this is a question for you both as entrepreneurs and both building a brand around each other. Um, I want to get to kind of know what, what are some of the failures as an entrepreneur that you guys have and different ideas, and how did those failures teach you guys to kind of bounce back or kind of innovate your new or uh, more successful ideas? Uh, well, for example, your podcast mm -hmm. and your different things with Fate Masters, because I know that's not the only top attempt at something that you've done is similar. Absolutely. Uh, but most, definitely more you're successful, and then you'll continue to grow your brand with your podcast. Uh, so with me, obviously, podcasts, is, they're number-driven. So for me, I like to you know look at numbers when it comes to you know the clicks that it's getting, the views, the comments. And I think, you know, for a lot of things, such it's very similar to this Instagram. Um, you know, the more likes and views that you get, 
Um, obviously, the better that you do in terms of just revenue that you get coming in. Obviously, getting monetized is extremely hard when it comes to podcasting because there's only so many views that you're going to get um, if you're not someone that's really huge. So, for me, it's 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 kind of a struggle when you think um, maybe one guest may have a lot of views coming in and you don't get that. But sometimes it's sometimes it's for the good because sometimes you may have someone who. Or sometimes you may do a podcast where you don't think you're going to get very many or you just do it just because, you know, you just have grinded it through and maybe those are some of the better ones. So um, it's twofold with that. Uh, yeah, these are the masks that we have coming out. If anybody would like to get any, we'll have them on sale next week. Um, give me our 50 though. These are made by Undeniable Masks. You can find them on Instagram. Uh, I would say uh, as an entrepreneur, failure is for me. Dante would be uh, trusting our own people or organization and uh, just not planning things. So I would say organization as well. Another thing would be wasting money. These are things that have affected me with the end goal as far as, and that's also fake masters. So these are things that I'm working on day to day and I've already been approved on thus far. So as I'm expanding and getting ready for our big event for Juneteenth next weekend, um, which ladies are free and the experience for ladies are free uh, as well and tune, on, tune in to the end goal to watch. Um, these are failures that I've been trying to avoid. Mm-hmm. I have two questions. Well, through the years in Indianapolis, I know that uh, you two, as not only basketball players, but entre- entrepreneurs in the Indianapolis community, uh, have certain insight that most people would like to you know, at least have a view into. So what have been the trials that you two have gone through in the last five years, whether basketball or otherwise, that would help improve the community to, you know, make a better impact. You know, make yeah. you guys, you know, actually. Well, I'll start. Well, one trial, some trials that I've uh, experienced are just bringing the wrong neighborhoods. You know, um, trying to help people too much in Indianapolis. You know, you only know people who support you, and as long as you support them and they support you, and we can all work together. I would say some other trials are just um, not keeping busy. You know, it's hard to stay busy especially when it's something that you may not like. So I try to give myself a schedule where I can get up in the morning, uh, plan my day out, really the day before, night before, and now I'm on a schedule. When people try to butt into my schedule, I have to replan. Well, some of the biggest things that I face, um, I, I face a ton of stuff just now, just being a, a, a black man in, in America, just the same, just, just the same thing that you know a lot of people go through. But I think for me individually, the, the toughest part of just doing things over the course of years is, you know, just trying to, to achieve my goals. Cause when you set really high goals, you know, you're, the pressure is on you. And I think when you set high goals, it, you know, it has a negative and a positive effect, you know, whenever you do that. So just um, having a dream of, you know, playing professional basketball or, ha- or having a dream of getting a degree or having certain things as that. And when you don't achieve one of those goals or when you're lacking on one of those goals or when you're behind on one of those goals, just being mentally ready to you know to push through those things so those have been some of the toughest things that i've pretty much been through it's a lot of self-inflicted stuff that i i believe that is really important for everyone to just set goals most definitely my second question um because you are so influential in the black community here in indianapolis uh, i would like to know um, what goals you have set for yourself in the next five years to help better others that are trying to improve themselves in the community so um one is this one is this i think giving people a platform and it's not just basketball players i think that's one thing that when i first started people were shocked that they're like oh well you have someone who's an artist you have someone who who does x y and z and i'm like you know i really want that i really want for you know everyone to be heard uh black white it really doesn't matter i want everyone to have a voice and when you do that, it doesn't limit yourself. So for me, just over the next five years, I just want to give other people a voice because I have a pretty solid following just through basketball. So I'm gonna try to use my skills for basketball and really just try to help the community out by giving others a voice because everyone, um, everyone, not everyone has a huge platform to do that. And I want to be able to be the person that gives everyone a huge platform to do that. So uh, with basketball, you know, there's a lot of white fans that, uh, you know, pay attention to me and my career. So I want to be able to shed light and give others uh, a way to share what they're doing and how they're doing it. Mm. Most definitely. Yeah, and for me, I, I agree with Aaron. You know, those sorts of things, but like I said, my biggest con- contribution to the black community in the next five years is just focus on fake masters. I have a tutoring program, I have SAT prep, 
I have my actual Fate Master Leadership Program, which is combined with Unique 7 at Night Achievement Academy, Unique 7X. And we also have other locations as well that we're expanding to, like I said, the Gary, Indiana area, and uh, multiple um, locations throughout the Midwest. Um, that's my goal for the next five years, and that's the way to be the most effective as far as teaching kids how to read early, uh, numbers early, and IT. That's what computer love. Will Garth, uh, my fraternity brother, and uh, videographer, and he's a media guru, guru as well. So that's what he works on, and be sure to follow him as well. Be sure to get our The In Gold Mask, created by Undeniably Masked, and be sure to follow Aaron Gordon Podcast, and Aaron Gordon, He's coming up on his last year right now, yep. and he's a superstar. His brother's a superstar, and he's in multiple fields. Educationally, he's a superstar uh, with athletics, coming to it as a captain last year, and also media side. Okay, that's, a, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Yeah. We just turned up. Uh, yeah, there's more food. Let's go. Man, y'all been solid. Love, bro. Great. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.